we'll start with this one, Robert. Is there ever a time when we might use a cliche on purpose and it works? Sure. That, that, that happens by all means. And when it works, generally, it's because there's a certain awareness in the scene by the characters that, that it's the cliche is a cliche uh, and it, the subtext is something um, uh, and entirely different. And so um, when, we, when the characters are aware that they are using a, a cliche uh, to hide the real meaning, to hide what they're really thinking and feeling uh, in a circumstance like that, uh, then indeed um, people, um, the characters using cliches uh, works and and so um, yes, uh, there, you know you can argue people do talk in cliches fine, but um, uh, a character who uses cliches unknowingly, unaware that their lines are cliched, uh, becomes a really boring character because they just say whatever everybody else always says, whatever people say in moments like that. And so there's, there's nothing exceptional or interesting about them. Uh, on the other hand, if a person uses a cliche, knowing it's a cliche in order to carry out a task of one kind that they're trying or another in the scene, for sure. Um, said, you know, I think I said somewhere today that every single principle that I've laid out for you can be contradicted. People can say anything or do anything at any time. Who the hell knows? And and so there are no rules. There are just there's a form. There are just um, uh, patterns and tendencies that can be reversed, turned upside down, inside out. It is just it just that it must be, as I've said, in character. But that means who the you know you have to figure out who the character is to know whether or not something is in character or not, and so um, so yeah you can do anything you want. I use that Boyd Crowder example as you know the opposite of what we would normally give a character, but he doesn't. Boyd says these things knowing that he's being elaborate and having fun with that, and so <clears throat> here's the difference. There's, in good writing, in good moments, there's always a subtext. If somebody uses a cliche and means exactly what they say in that cliched moment, uh, and there's no subtext, then it will die. I've used that example in, in my lectures of uh, two lovers sitting opposite each other in a, in a, in a candlelit uh, table, um, the, the light glinting off the, the dewy eyes of the lovers and uh, uh, gentle breezes billowing the curtains and beautiful music playing in the background. And they reach across the table and say, I love you, I love you, and actually mean it. And actually fully mean it. That is a cliche of the worst kind, and the scene will die like a squashed dog in the road. But if they say, I love you, I love you, and something else is going on, somebody's doing, somebody's saying I love you because they're desperate that they're afraid that the person they love is leaving them. Somebody's saying I love you to set the other person up to leave them or whatever. As long as there's something going on underneath what the characters say and do in the subtext, then they can say anything you want. And they can use all the cliches that you want as long as there's something else in the subtext so that we can see through the cliche to what they're really thinking, really feeling, really doing, what action they're really taking by using that cliche. Uh, so sure. As long as it's in character and as long 
as there's a subtext so that whatever is said, cliched or not, means more than the thing itself. 